All right. Um, so how did you prepare for Pat? Um, I basically started by going, getting used to doing a bit more lengthy math question, uh, physics question, sorry, yep. than what I usually do in A level. So I went, I think, on the Olympiad questions. And yep. I think the wrong ones were especially good for that. And then for the math bit of the test, um, I just studied my A levels and I thought that was all right for it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, one thing I've noticed in Pat is that they have an emphasis on ge geometry. Every paper has like one geometric shape you've got to work out yeah, in A level, yeah. which isn't in A level, A level very much. But that comes up like, quite a lot in like math challenges. Yeah. So it might be worth having a look at some math challenge papers to get used to that kind of problem solving. Yeah. One problem with Pat is that often it draws on materials that you haven't finished in year 12. So like you might not have learned about fields or stuff like that. So you might have to go ahead and learn some material before the paper that you haven't covered yet in A levels. And maybe it'd be good, good advice to do some AS questions and A level questions on the topics in the exam. So you're like familiar with them on a basic level and then you can extend it into Pat a bit more. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Like sometimes though, like, and especially at the end of the paper where the questions tend to get a bit harder, in some of the papers I've noticed that they do require like basic calculus, like differentiating maybe something, but like we you don't usually do that in A-levels. So I think like you should maybe have a quick look at some problems like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's mainly getting, because what people tend to do is they tend to forget their maths when they're doing physics. So they'll do physics problems and they'll suddenly forget like, so if you gave them a very simple rearranging question with X and Y in a maths paper, they could do it. But the second is in a physics exam, they completely lose their minds and they can't do it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. So it's getting used to being comfortable doing maths in physics. Yeah, especially with simultaneous, simultaneous equations. Um, yeah, setting them up. Like, they, they are used in physics. So yeah. be, be, like, expect them to be there and use them. Yeah. I think like by the end of it, something I did was I just, when I did problems, maybe I wouldn't work them out the whole way. I'll just look and think how I do it and then that'll just yeah. be it. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, the main thing I say is do as many past papers as you can. Although the styles change a lot over the years, it's just the same kind of questions come up. Yeah. And it's good to get used to, especially things like eclipses and solar systems. It's just, that requires a lot of general knowledge that you might need to just learn. So the more yeah. past papers you do, you see what kind of questions they ask and you just get to familiar with them. Like knowing what the different types of eclipses are, what a uh, angular diameter is and all that kind of stuff, just so you can, because that's not in the A-level syllabus. Yeah. Like sometimes, sometimes they even ask about like what is it, uh, Archimedes principle? Yep. Yeah. So about flotations and buoyancy forces and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's basically looking at them, and the more papers you do, you'll see topics that don't really come up in the level, and it's worth reading up on those to get familiar with them and looking at the solutions. Yeah, especially on simple harmonic motion, actually. Yeah. yeah it does come up, but you probably won't do it. Comes up disguised. You haven't got to know strictly about it, but you've got to know roughly the principles. Yeah.